I hope everyone's doing well today. Well, I have a really intense story today, uh, and it is a, a tale as old as time, and it just keeps getting added to. Yet another soul seems to be added to the long list of Clinton crony suicides. Originally the cause of death of a Clinton advisor, Mark Middleton, who was a contact between Clinton and the dead pervert Jeffrey Epstein, was undisclosed. But now it's come out that Middleton was found dead, hanging from a tree with an electrical cord around his neck and a shotgun blast through his chest, another obvious suicide. But more on that in a bit. How does this Clinton body count remain a matter of conspiracy theory in so many people's minds? How would even the most deluded Democrat not wake up at this point? The latest inconvenient death got me thinking about the Clinton body count, which is considered a wacko conspiracy theory by the mainstream media and other liars and buffoons. This so-called conspiracy uh, brings out a number of people. Yeah, there's a lot of great documentaries about this, and the list is uh, 50 to 60 is very conservative of the amount of people that have died that were associated with Bill and Hillary Clinton under the most mysterious circumstances. And most of them died very violently. Usually these uh, violent deaths were ruled suicides. And that's a lot of suicide, Pilgrim. Probably the most familiar name on the list is Vince Foster, who really was a man who knew too much. He was the Clinton's personal lawyer and the deputy White House counsel. Foster's roots with the Clintons stretched all the way back to Hope, Arkansas, where he partnered with Hillary at the Rose Law Firm during Bill's time as governor. Now, Foster was a close friend of the Clintons, and some have suggested that he and Hillary even had an affair, but that's speculative because she's so gross. At any rate, Foster was responsible for shielding the first family and keeping all their skeletons safely in the closet. This was very problematic since the Clintons had a lot of skeletons. At this time, the biggest uh, scandal they had going was Whitewater. Way back in the 70s, Bill and Hillary abused Bill's position in the government and they formed the Whitewater Development Corporation with James and Susan McDougall. Soon the McDougalls were convicted of participating in a $3 million conspiracy to defraud two federally backed financial institutions. And I'm going to spare you the gory details, but Whitewater was a monster scandal. If you had a TV in the 90s, you certainly heard all about it. Uh, it involved the Clintons, of course. Uh, it became very clear they were very guilty. But this wasn't the only case that was keeping Foster busy. Uh, Madison Guarantee, a bank that was owned by the McDougals, was another problem. Evidently, funds from the bank had been illegally diverted to Clinton's campaign for governor in the mid-80s, and Bill and Hillary had intervened with state regulators to help keep this bank solvent. And things got a lot worse when the Clintons got to the White House. More controversy came up when Hillary Clinton demanded that Foster fire seven employees from the travel office that served the White House press corps. Of course, this became well known as Travelgate, and it involved the Clintons trying to bring their entire crime team from Arkansas to help make Washington corrupt again. Now, Foster sadly had a conscience and he was racked with guilt and shame over this entire situation, and the lies took such a heavy toll on him that he decided he was going to resign. Now, this would prove to be a fatal mistake. Foster was last seen on July 19th at the White House, and the next night he was found dead of an apparent gunshot wound at Fort Macy Park. The death was officially ruled a suicide, but uh, and the Starr investigation originally backed the conclusion, but certain details did not add up at all. For instance, the gun Foster supposedly used to kill himself was reported to be supposedly in his hand, but the person that found the body said there was no gun at all. His pager memory had been erased as well. Uh, usually after you kill yourself, I guess that's the first thing you do. Evidence suggests his body had been moved entirely after his death. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of this vast right-wing conspiracy, as Hillary called it. It was soon discovered that key papers thought to be in Foster's possession had gone missing. The records were not retrieved for more than two years. And when they finally showed up, 
They were in the private quarters of the White House with Hillary Clinton's fingerprints all over them. Surprise, surprise. In addition to Foster, other Clinton associates met untimely ends as well. Here's just a very short list of suspicious deaths. James McDougal, of course, he died of a heart attack right before he was supposed to he was supposed to be a witness in the in the case against Bill Clinton and Whitewater. And then shortly after Vince Foster's death, Jerry Parks said Bill Clinton is cleaning house. Parks had compiled a dossier of Clinton misdeeds, which was stolen from his home in a robbery, and a week later he was shot seven times while driving his car, and his murder was never solved. Stanley Huggins was a partner at a Memphis law firm investigating Madison Guarantee. Officially, he succumbed to viral pneumonia despite having no signs of ill health. His wife tried to get hospital records, but they were sealed by none other than Janet Reno under presidential orders from Clinton. During the weekend of the death, Huggins' Memphis office was broken into, his files were stolen, and a 300-page report was never released. Neil Moody soon died. After her husband's death, Lisa Foster, who was the widow of Vince, married James Moody, a judge in Arkansas. Around the time Susan McDougall first went to jail for contempt, Judge Moody's son, Neil, died in a car crash. There was reports that Neil Moody had discovered something very unsettling among his stepmother's private papers and was allegedly talking to Bob Woodward of the Washington Post about a blockbuster story. Witnesses said they saw Neil Moody sitting in a car arguing with another person just prior to his car suddenly speeding into a brick wall. Hmm. Now, Ed Willie, probably a lot of people remember, uh, remember Kathleen Willie, who was sexually assaulted in the White House by Bill Clinton. Well, her husband died of a shotgun blast to the head, uh, which of course was uh, judged a suicide on the same day that she was sexually assaulted in the White House by Bill Clinton. That's not suspicious at all. Suzanne Coleman, she allegedly had an affair with Clinton when he was the Attorney General of Arkansas and was reportedly seven months pregnant with his child. Death was determined to be a suicide with a gunshot to the back of her head. Judy Gibbs was a penthouse model and call girl. She worked at a bordello near Mena, Arkansas. Gibbs' family said Bill Clinton was a regular customer. In a sworn statement, Clinton bodyguard Barry Spivey said he had been with the governor in a plane. When it flew over Judy Gibbs' house, Clinton pointed it out and told him who it belonged to. The house would later be burned down with Judy inside. There are at least 60, and this is no exaggeration, other deaths of Clinton associates, some more gruesome and suspicious than the first few that I just came across there. And so, like many others, a big attempt at hiding this awful death of Mark Middleton recently was made. It's now an open and active investigation. Will this be the one that finally sticks to the Clintons? Who likes them guys anymore anyway? Well, anyhow, that's the story I have for you today, the Clinton body count. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will talk to you in a while.